When I'm curious and I don't already know about a given subject, I try to read something about it. When you read from a few different books, listen to a few different historians, look through original source material for the time of context, you can usually get a good idea of the dynamics of an event or an abstraction of an event. Add that to your toolbox, hopefully learn a little more and help folks when you can, or encourage them to learn for themselves. Histories for the people. What creates now is a whole history made of different people from different socioeconomic backgrounds, working together in different power structures to create and collaborate through labor and resources. On May 4th, 1886, there was a labor demonstration in the Haymarket Square in Chicago, Illinois. The demonstration began as a peaceful protest in support of the eight-hour workday. As industrialization took over the working poor's lives due to rate of production, workers developed unions, community organizations, literature, and news dailies for immigrants and workers to educate and inform. The dispossessed workers empowered themselves through mobilizing their peers, community outreach, demonstration, and direct action. They realized the power dynamics between them and the capitalist class could change when they worked as one group protecting their interests and security. Together they were stronger and could demand humane conditions through collective bargaining. The capitalist class who had recently developed their own parties through political revolution were afraid of social revolution, an upending of the class system. The May 4th crowd estimates in Haymarket Square vary between 600 and 3,000. All there for multiple hours, peacefully gathered to listen to speakers and demonstrate for better work conditions without incident. A large portion of the peaceful crowd left later in the evening. When the last speaker finished at 10.30 p.m., police marched to mass, demanding those left and the speaker to disperse. A police officer or an agitator discharged a homemade bomb, invoking the violent response from the police. The bomb left seven police officers and at least four civilians dead, dozens others wounded. Many witnesses stated the officers slain were due to friendly fire. An anonymous police official told the Chicago Tribune, a very large number of the police were wounded by each other's revolvers. It was every man for himself. And while some got two or three squares away, the rest emptied the revolvers mainly into each other. Historian Paul Average maintains that the police fired on the fleeing demonstrators, reloaded, and then fired again, killing four and wounding as many as 70 people. In the following weeks, eight anarchists were arrested and convicted of conspiracy. The event was sourced as a media narrative to crack down on the labor movement, with regional and national press painting organized labor, socialist, communist, anarchist, and anti-capitalist as violent insurgencies. Seven of the eight Haymarket conspiracists were sentenced to death, one to a term of 15 years in prison, two commuted of the sentences to terms of life in prison, another committed suicide in jail rather than face the gallows. The other four men were hanged on November 11, 1887. At the convention of the American Federation of Labor in 1888, the union decided to campaign for shorter work day again. May 1st, 1890 was agreed upon as the date which workers would strike for an eight-hour work day. The first International May Day was a spectacular success. The front page of the New York World on May 2nd, 1890 was devoted to coverage of the event. Two of its headlines were Parade of Jubilant Working Men in All the Trade Centers of the Civilized World and Everywhere the workmen join in demands for a normal day. The Times of London listed two dozen European cities in which demonstrations had taken place, noting there have been rallies in Cuba, Peru, and Chile. Commemoration of May Day became an annual event the following year. In the United States and Canada, the official holiday for workers is Labor Day in September. This day was promoted by the Central Labor Union and Knights of Labor, who organized the first parade in New York City. After the Haymarket Square riot in May 1886, U.S. President Grover Cleveland feared that commemorating Labor Day on May 1st could become an opportunity to commemorate the riots. Thus, he moved in 1887 to support Labor Day that the Knights supported. Whether the men convicted of conspiracy actually conspired in the making of the bomb or killing police officers or killing civilians, labor history is violent and seldom talked about. That's why it's important for us to search for our history.